In an industry stuffed with marketing bullshit, empty promises, and shiny suited liars, one woman's had enough. She knows what it's like to have the wrong clients, no money, and no time for fun. But she also knows how to fix it. And on the Business for Superheroes show, she promises to tell the down and dirty truth about business, sales, and running away with the circus. Here's your host, Vicki Fraser. Hello and welcome to the Business for Superheroes show. <laughs> it's a spooky Halloween episode this evening. Uh, it's not. <laughs> it's not even a little bit spooky. Oh man, it's really foggy outside. It's like uber fog. <laughs> you, you are so mean. I am. Uh, welcome to the Business for Superheroes show. My name is Vicky Fraser and I'm going to be really boring for the rest of the podcast because that's what my co-host Joe Fraser would like to happen. Hello. <laughs> hello hello so it actually is um halloween right now um it is we're gonna i'm no doubt we're sat in front of a window and there will be at some point some small child turning up rattling a bag or possibly a horrifying zombie clown face possibly a horrifying zombie clown face if there was a scream in the middle of this podcast it is because somebody has snuck up on us yeah and is peering in the window or maybe actually snuck up on us i don't know the back door's closed right it's closed <laughs> so um yeah it's it's halloween today and we made a spooktastic halloween marketing video over the weekend didn't we joe it had amazing production values it was well rehearsed it, it was it was everything a top-notch video should really be it was neither of those things but it was very it was cool none of those things but well it was everything a top-notch video should be because <laughs> tell the li- tell the listeners why it was top-notch i filmed it <gasps> no i won oh you won you won the competition i won the competition yeah so i subscribed to ben settles email players he's like the email marketing dude and he knows pretty much everything there is to know i'm going to ask him to come on the podcast at some point and talk Ooh. to us about email marketing that'd be a good one it will be a good one. it'll be a really bloody good one and now he knows who i am because he because i won his competition <laughs> yeah he, he might agree to come on the show, which is really cool. Anyway, he had done, um, every month they do a, a kind of email competition, basically. So you'll you'll write an email and put it up there and the winner will get a bag of swag. Don't know what the swag is yet. Apparently it arrives on a magical unicorn, which is mm. what I'm most excited about. That'd be cool. Yeah. But this, this week they had a guy called Tyson Zana, and I, I don't know how to, I've probably pronounced his name horribly wrong there, so I, there's many apologies. Um, but he's like a video marketing expert. Right. And so he, this this month it was email and video form basically. Cool. It was so it was like my, you know how sometimes I do my daily emails on, on a video. And yes. Ping them out. I've just started a YouTube channel finally. Been meaning to do that for months. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so I thought, yeah, I'm going to enter this. So I entered it and we put together this Halloween video, didn't we? We did. Which you should totally go and watch, by the way, because it's hilarious, Mouse. And it's at www.tinyurl.com forward slash spooky dingle. Good shout. Well done. Oh, I know, right? The link will be in the show notes. But you should go and have a look at it, partly because I am I think it's amusing. <laughs> Part, <laughs> partly because I won, and that's pleased me greatly. And partly because it's kind of relevant to what we're going to be talking about today in today's podcast. Oh, okay. Because carrying on the FBI hostage negotiation theme... Will it ever end? Will it ever end? I don't know. Probably not. It could go on forever. <sighs> carrying on that theme, we are now on step three. Oh, good lord. What? We've done about six of these so far. I How know. can we be on step three? Because we did a whole thing on active listening, which was really valuable for people. Oh. And then we did some um, empathy last week and played people the country blues song. Mm-hmm. And so this week is all about building rapport. Okay, how do we do that? Well, I think first of all, Joe, you should oh, recap, have to recap the, the previous the six previous episodes. Five stages. <laughs> no, the previous the three stages. The three stages. Okay. Which are? So so oh man. I haven't uh, even given him any notes here. <laughs> this is not fair. There's active listening. Yeah, hold on. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you're thank welcome. You. Yeah, cheers. Then there's oh, what I what Empathy. Empathy came. <laughs> Sorry, I was in a bit of a yawn then. That's yeah. why it came out really weird. <laughs> really dull. So empathy. Yeah. And then there was this one that we're talking about today, which is building rapport. Yeah. Then after that comes influence. Yeah. 
And after that comes... Behavioural change. Behavioural change. Or, you know, control or whatever. So, yeah, so today we're on building rapport because we're, we've now obviously, we've, we've listened, we've shown empathy. We've understood. Understood. And now we are building rapport. Um, so empathy is what you feel and rapport is when they feel it back. Okay. Kind of. And they start to trust you, basically. So who's, so at, at this point, in this juncture, I am the hostage negotiator. I okay, guess. We okay. are we are talking from the point of view of because because if if empathy and rapport mm. are just opposite sides of the same mm. coin, seen from the different side, no. Well, so I well, empathy is showing that you understand what somebody is going through. Empathy and kind of well, rapport is okay. So that that was kind of a definition that. I got from one of the FBI hostage negotiation articles that I was reading because I read all kinds of crazy crap like that. Okay. And but then I thought, well, what, what's the actual definition of rapport? So the actual definition of rapport, according to the I think it's the Merriam-Webster dictionary I got it from, is a close and harmonious relationship in which the people or groups concerned understand each other's feelings or ideas and communicate well. Which is pretty much what you want to aim for with your marketing, really. Okay. And also what you want to aim for if you're negotiating with a hostage taker. So would it be right to say that empathy is like the one-sided thing where I understand what yeah. they're going through and rapport is when we understand what each other are going through? Yes. Yeah, that's that's a very good and succinct okay. explanation, Joe. Thank you. It's very good. Okay. Yeah. Right. So yeah, that's pretty much what we're talking about here. Yeah, building rapport, really. And and the whole point of this is that you want to get people to trust you because if they don't trust you, they're never going to buy from you. And this isn't about unfairly getting people to trust you no. or misleading them into trusting you or no. bending their tiny little jelly brain into, you know, trusting you. This no. is legitimately because you've spoken and you've understood and you've listened and everybody's building this trust together. It's, it's, it's legit trust. Yeah, it's, totally. It's, it's not. Yeah. This is, this is building relationships. This isn't, this isn't trying to sell double glazing to little old ladies. No, nah, not at all. Not at all. This is Sorry building... to any double glazing salesmen out there. Well, no, the good ones won't be offended and the bad ones will feel triggered and need a safe space, probably. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Oh, what no. was we got? No. Don't go there. What? Don't go where? The whole triggering thing. Oh, I wasn't going really. to Safe space, okay. No, I was just glanc- glancing back at my notes because, um, you know, oh man, I can't I can't make this bigger. I can't read my notes. I'm getting old. You are. Not even, you know, this isn't even kind of small. It's quite far away. <laughs> It's quite far away, yes, that's true. Father Ted style. So yeah, we, we're we're building rapport with our customers and clients okay. to build trust. And we're doing it in a real way. Like you say, this is not manipulating people. This is building actual relationships, which is a much more fun way to do your marketing. Mm-hmm. Total more fun. So really, you want to just give your prospects your attention. That's That's one of the first things you need to do if you want to build rapport with them. You want to speak to the things that they care about in your marketing. So, I mean, because when you're kind of, writing your websites and writing your sales letters you can't you're not having a face-to-face conversation with them so it's not like you can get immediate feedback so this is where knowing your customer comes in Mm -hmm. so you need to be kind of talking about the things that they care about um but you can ask them questions as well so you can interact with them even if you're not actually speaking to them you know online surveys online questionnaires getting people's opinions all of which is useful stuff to do okay but if you're when you're actually and also when ask your actual clients and customers questions as well, ask them about themselves, not just professionally but personally as well. So you want to because in the olden days, old school salesmen had their little black books. Do you remember? Know. Yeah. Well, I say, do you remember? I don't know. So I, I wasn't. I was never an old school salesman. No, but, yes. <laughs> but you have heard of such a thing. Mm-hmm. And they would have these books, and in them would be like all the kind of customer details, like name and phone number and, you know, what they've bought and when you've spoken to them, all the the rest of it. But they would also have in these little books their wives' birthdays, their children's birthdays, where their kids go to school, what, you know, Mm. what their favourite films are, all of this kind of useful information that they can use to kind of build up a relationship and talk about stuff that they care about. And you might kind of think, well, isn't this a bit manipulative? But no, it's not really, because that's actually a lot of of effort to go to, Mm. to gather this information about people and make them feel special. And that's what and if, if you understand that they're struggling to pay, you know, college tuition. If you're looking for people, you, you can you can categorize people and, and 
mm. you know, help them by pointing them at the right products at the right time. Exactly. They might, yeah. they might know, you know, the sales, the good salesman might know that your son is about to go to college and, you know, maybe he needs a payment plan or yeah, yeah. maybe he needs a, a new bank account or he needs some, you know, yeah. some stuff. Exactly. This isn't about trying to sell people that something that they're not interested in or that they don't want. This is about selling to people who already want what it is that you're offering, but they're not necessarily going to buy it from you. Mm-hmm. That's that's kind of that's that's kind of what it's all about. So so yeah, let's so let's let's have a little look at how we can build rapport with with people. I'm gonna come. I'm gonna share my my top favorite ways to do that with your marketing towards the end of the podcast. But I just wanted to talk a little bit more about actual communication and one of the most important things. What's that face for? Nothing. It's my face. It wasn't your normal face. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It doesn't translate it's to Halloween. radio. It's Halloween. That's... Leave me alone. Right, okay. Go and explain. Um, <laughs> okay, so, so yeah, there's, there's, if, you, if you're actually talking to somebody in person, you want to make sure that your communication is congruent, so your verbal communication is congruent with your facial expressions. <laughs> right. <laughs> and your gestures and your tone of voice. Okay. None of which you are doing right now. <laughs> so, so, so you can't, you can't deadpan with, with like a proper, you know, no facial expression. Say, I'm really excited to offer you this, you know, marvelous product. No, but that's actually a really, really good example of how most people's marketing reads. Because <laughs> <laughs> if you were to read it out loud, that's what most people's marketing would sound like. Okay. I'm really, really passionate about taps. Yeah, taps are the future. Yes. So yeah, but the, you can do that same thing in your writing as well. It's about having a consistent tone of voice and just being being yourself, mm. really, which is what my event, which by the time you listen to this will be over, <sighs> um, <laughs> is all about. So people, basically, people can't read your mind. They They can only rely on your, they can only hear what you say or read what you write and you know, look at, look at what you do and how you behave. Okay. And I say that because it's really important that people trust you. And I've, I've met oft, often when I meet business owners in person, I find that their personality is actually quite different to the way they write and mm-hmm. their marketing. Yeah. Do you find that when you meet people and see businesses and. Yeah. There's, there's, there's one guy I deal with who is from one of my customers actually, and he's, he's charming and entertaining in person. And then, in no, via via his written language it is so dry, so serious, so very very unexciting. Mm. But that 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 is what most business owners do with their marketing communications, with mm. their copywriting, with their you know with their with, with their videos. And these are people that when I meet them in person, I'm like, you know, before I meet them, I might be a bit kind of like, oh, this is going to be yeah. a bit trying and then i'll meet them in person and they're just like you say charming and funny and entertaining fascinating and motivated and all yeah sorts. and and my reaction is always what on earth happened between your brain and that website yeah. we are fascinated and excited by our diverse range of taps <laughs> and i'm probably being a little we're probably being a little bit mean but you don't, I, you don't actually know anybody who sells taps do you no i don't thank goodness for that yeah Oh, I don't think I do. Maybe there's someone on my list. <clears throat> but yeah, so you've derailed my. Oh, that's kind of what I'm here for. Oh, I know, I know, I'm I know. Just the, I'm just the disruptive. Oh yeah, I remember now. Okay, right. so what happens between their brain and the page of boring copy is the zombie marketing plague. Yeah, I think it's fear. I think people people think that they need to. Look professional. <laughs> Sound like a legitimate business when which, in fact they're just screaming children inside. Yeah, which, which means actually that what they end up looking like is all those old ladies that wander around towns wearing the same beige coat. You know the ones I mean. Mm. And that's why this really pisses me off. Why is the only clothes choice for old people beige? Or British gray? racing beige. But it, British racing beige. <laughs> but I just think it's really sad because I bet all of these old ladies and gentlemen have really exciting stories to tell Mm. like my friend Mo's auntie Flo who lived to be 101 and she died earlier this year and so she was like this this crazy old lady well not crazy crazy but like this awesome old lady and she used to be 
a sword swallower and fire eater in an actual honest to god circus because her husband was the great Khan who was a snake charmer. Nice. And she met him in the 1930s, which in itself was unusual because she was a white woman from Yorkshire and he was a Persian gentleman in a travelling circus, which is just awesome. So that's a slight divert from where we're talking about. Uh but the, the, the general idea is don't be beige. Yeah, don't be beige. Be who you are. And Auntie Flo never stopped being who she was. She was. There's a really funny video of us somewhere on Facebook waving a knife around on her 100th birthday. And everyone's was <laughs> like, oh my God. <laughs> so, so yeah, don't, don't be beige. Just be, be yourself, really. Don't, don't be afraid to be yourself. What if, what if yourself is really beige? Well, then I can't help. <laughs> but I don't think anybody is really that beige. No, not, not to their not to their ideal target market because remember people buy from people they don't buy from corporations you need to build this rapport you need to build a relationship and don't be afraid to give your opinion about stuff that you care about as well even if it's controversial because hmm. you shouldn't you shouldn't have to wrap your personality up in cotton wool to avoid offending people who are probably never going to like you anyway yes you don't um, have to be liked by everyone yeah find your niche and, and go for it yeah, I mean, I'm on the lists of people who, you know, sometimes they make me want to tear my hair out. I mean, Ben Settle's one of them. I love his email marketing. I think he's probably a really nice bloke. But some of the things he comes out with, I'm just like, we are polar opposites. Really? Yeah, total polar opposites in some of our political ideas. And, well, mm-hmm. he's American as well, so we're going to be wildly different anyway because different, you know. Is he, is he going to vote Trump? I, I have no idea. I don't actually know. He hasn't said and it. It's none of my business. And I, I, I wouldn't ask. I, I wouldn't have thought so. Um, <laughs> but, but you know, he's, I respect him totally as a marketer and business owner. And I learn a lot from him because he really knows what he's talking about. But some of, some of his opinions are wildly differing to mine. And I would imagine that some of my opinions would make him want to tear his hair out. But I bet we'll get on really well if we ever meet. Right. Because we're both grown-ups and we know that you don't have to always agree with somebody to like them and get on with them. And that's the way you need to approach your marketing. You'll find that the people who you really piss off will never be your customers anyway, and they'll just go and do something else and find somebody else. But some of the people who like you, but that you piss off in other ways, might go on then to become some of your very best customers. Mm. At least they'll respect your honesty and... Integrity. Integrity, and yeah. Yeah, and also if you show a willingness to change your mind, if you're, you know, if someone can prove you wrong, I will always change my mind if someone can prove that I'm wrong, or show me that I'm wrong. Mm. And I have done many times in the past. So, so there you go, really. Just, just... Be yourself. Don't be afraid to be controversial. Don't be afraid to annoy a few people. And don't be offended when somebody, you know, if, if rapport is a two-way street, it's not just, you know, we're not just talking empathy here where you're trying to understand someone else. If it's rapport and you are displaying your true self to people mm. and making noises and expressing your opinions and getting on with it, I guess it's important that you don't get offended when other people do the same. Yeah. Absolutely, because you know what? Wouldn't the world be boring if everyone agreed about everything, mm. and nobody would ever get anything done? And you know, there's, I mean, there's, there's there's some things that are beyond the pale, like Donald Trump, for example. <laughs> but <laughs> but <Hi> by al- <laughs> that would be hilarious, wouldn't it? <laughs> but, but by and large, you know, most people are pretty reasonable humans and yeah. pretty decent. And it's, it's and the ones you want, you probably don't want to build rapport with anyway. Exactly, and very few people are not decent people. I think. Yeah. When you get right down to it. And most people have an interesting take on things and you can learn something from most people if you're willing to do so. And also don't be, don't be upset if you do say something that offends somebody and then they send you a shittogram. Yeah. I'm horribly offended at that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which Hi. if if you only get I'm horribly offended at that, then you're you're doing quite well. I've had people telling me to fuck off and die before. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's classy. I know. And do you remember that woman who wrote me that awful passive aggressive? Oh, she was that, gonna pray for you. She was that. gonna pray for me and she was just oh, she was horrific. She was questioning my pet my parents' parenting skills and <laughs> it was just like, Oh my god, really? Do one. <laughs> but she was doing it really sickly, sweetly oh, and politely, wasn't she? It was nasty. She Horrible. was the very worst type of religious person, total kind of nasty hypocrite who feels superior purely because yeah. of her Ooh. I wouldn't even say faith it's because of her religion hmm. not because of her faith because she was not a person of faith the way I recognise it no she was she was mean she was hilarious that was really really funny <laughs> so that that was that was quite entertaining I haven't had an awful lot of hate mail recently but I'm obviously not doing you're, well you're anymore. not being you're not being controversial enough. I mean, maybe maybe all the people who are now listening all you know two of them or whatever hi there god um <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you just pushed everyone else away. 
with with opinion. Maybe I have. I don't think I have particularly objectionable opinions, do I? I don't think so. On some things, I probably do. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Anyway, so I'm trying to think of some a, a strong opinion that I can chuck out that's vaguely related to what we're talking about, and I can't think of anything at the yeah. moment. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, homeopathy. That'll do. Bullshit. Utter horse toss. Unicorn farts and nonsense. There you go. That should have got rid of a few people. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. My top ways to create rapport. Let's let's give let's give people a little bit of a takeaway here. Okay. So my top ways to create rapport, daily emails, obviously. Daily emails work beautifully. They do work beautifully. I get I get emails. Got an email course. You've got one. Got an email course, yeah. You could get people started on email course on, on how to do a daily emails if they're not sure. Yeah, and you can do the same with whatever products you've got out there, with whatever you you know, whatever thing that you use, show people how you do it. Mm. Charge them. Charge them for it. Don't do it for free. Um, you can do a regular printed newsletter, yeah. as I do, my gazette. With yep. a crossword competition, and I actually do give prizes away, which is really funny because last month I got no entries for the crossword competition what? at all. I know, right? Should have told me I would have won. No, I've got a house full of books you can read. Um, <laughs> but it's always I give away a book that I'm reading at the moment, which might be a business book, or it might be some daft fantasy, or it might be a random book that someone's told me to read. So it could be absolutely anything. Mm-hmm. Um, and nobody, nobody sent in a crossword last month. So I mentioned that in October's. Gazette, and I've had seriously about twenty people into this <laughs> month. By the way, not everybody gets a book. I am not sending twenty books out. It's first person out of the hat gets a book, <laughs> um, so the winner has already been picked. But thank you so much to everybody who sent me a crossword that cool. because that was really cool. I've been like they keep pouring in, and I'm like this is really cool. Nice. But that's rapport. That's building the relationship because that's not just me firing stuff out at people. Mm. That's them that's sending them. stuff back to me. Yeah, And I also found out that um, Ali, who enters the crossword competition every now and then, and whose kid is awesomely interested in marketing and fills in the crossword, he has just passed his motorcycle test. Sweet. And is thinking of buying a Triumph. It's a good choice. Good choice. So Got one in the garage that doesn't go out if you want to make an offer. I'm not selling my bike. <laughs> I'm selling your bike. Anyway. So yeah, daily emails, a regular printed newsletter, a podcast. 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 Because I know people love listening to this because... Because they just they crazy tell, people. They, uh, they tell us, and we've got we've got quite a lot of reviews on iTunes, you know. And that's most people, most podcasts don't have double figure reviews because it's really difficult to get people to review. Please review us. Please review us. Please. Um, what else? Videos, video marketing, like my Halloween video. It's got 120 views so far, and I've only just literally just put up my YouTube channel, so I'm quite pleased with that. 120 views. But that's that's the only video I've got on my YouTube channel. <laughs> I'm quite pleased about that. <laughs> and it won. Write a book, write other documents, ebooks, that kind of thing. Um, do training courses for people, teach people mm-hmm. how to do the things you do. Give people help and advice. Charge for it. Yeah. Give a bit away for free, but charge for it. So yeah, there you go. In the end, it's all about lovable marketing. Lovable marketing. Lovable marketing. So is that your is that your phrase? I don't know, really. Yeah. Nice. I won't be able to trademark it because it's too common. But it might... Oh, oh, that might be what my workshop that I'm doing becomes called. Because mm-hmm. I gave it a really crappy name this time around because I was just like, ah, oh, do this thing. I need to do it. I need to get it out there. And then I was like, blah, blah, blah. Who do you think you are? And I was like, that's a crap name. <laughs> <laughs> Still so, going to use it. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, it, it doesn't really matter now because it's it's been and gone. Well, it clearly hasn't yet. But by the time you listen... You know what? Let's just finish there okay. if you would like to borrow my brain which normally works better than it does right now <laughs> <laughs> it will look it will work much better after the event businessforsuperheroes.com forward slash borrow my brain oh yes because ben my lovely ben who does my ppc has, he, has, has he... set up a redirect for me so that now i don't have a stupid url you don't you don't have to remember all the hyphens nope Businessforsuperheroes.com forward slash borrow my brain let's see if that makes a difference to the bookings <laughs> and my halloween winning video tinyurl.com forward slash spooky dingle well done that's good yeah i know right yeah. so thanks very much joe no worries um we'll be back same time next week and we'll be talking about step number four in hostage negotiation good lord will, I, it, will it never end it will never end and so what's step four joe influence yes it is so next week we will be back influencing in your ears <laughs> see ya be good and if you can't be good don't get caught <laughs> Thank you.
Like what you've just heard? Tell your colleagues. Tell your friends. Send them to www.businessforsuperheroes.com slash podcast.